Okay, so in second turn, and we now have the full complement of action dice in the bag. So I'm going to pull seven out of the bag. Um, this procedure might remind some people of uh, bolt action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, the difference being that with bolt action, um, you can choose, the, the facings all have um, action descriptions on them and you can choose which facing you want to use, but with this game you uh, roll the dice to see what you get. And um, again, slightly unusual, but as the English have the majority of dice in the bag, we pulled out five French dice and only two English. Um, but the English player is going to know from that that he's likely to be the active player for the rest of this turn because um, he's got, now got far more dice in the bag than the French. Um, but anyway, put the English to one side for the moment and we roll the French ones to see what we get. Um, the one we know is going to be useless, but the others we can probably use. Six, five, four and three. So same again. I'll... Um, Think about what I'm going to do with those and then uh, show you the result. Well, I didn't have quite the, um, the dice facings that I wanted. Um, unfortunately, this distance between the cavalry and the English line is about 26 centimetres, 25 26 centimetres, which means that it's outside of the normal movement rate of these cavalry. Um, now, they are impact cavalry, which means that normally to charge you would need a dice facing one higher than their uh, discipline level. But if they have the impact ability, they can charge on the a dice facing of their discipline level. But they would need to have either two of those dice facings... Um, to get that extra DU of movement, or a six. Um, and the problem with, I've put the six on this these guys here, but the problem with doing that is that it will be the la one of the last actions that the, <coughs> sorry, that the French take, um, because it's a number six, so it's played at the end of the phase, um, which gives the English a better opportunity to deploy their stakes um, but I had no other way of doing it unfortunately because I didn't have a double of any uh, any other dice facing so the only way I'm going to reach them is using that uh, that six so we'll have to see how that plays out and then I've put the other dice um, on these cavalry here to allow them to manoeuvre to bring them around to the side um, a unit of cavalry over there, um, just to get them a little bit further forward. And um, I, need, I want to get these crossbowmen up as well, see if I can start to pepper the uh, English lines with crossbow bolts. So um, I've just decided to do that. So now we'll see what the English do with their two action dice. So this is the roll for the English. Oh, terrible news. Two ones which means neither of those dice are usable. So the French are in luck there. They're going to get their attack in on the English longbowmen before they plant their stakes. So um, the English in this, in this phase of the turn aren't going to be able to do anything at all other than to receive the, uh, the uh, French charge. So let's see how that plays out. All right, so starting over here with the number three, um, all they can do is a simple advance. But they are allowed to shift one DU, which is just enough to get them past these guys. So they can move four DU, which is 24 centimetres. Um, move, move that one forward first of all. And we'll just put that one, that's one DU. So they're right there. That goes to a one. Uh, next, the crossbowmen um, move forward 3 DU because they're medium foot, so that's 18 centimetres. 
Crossbowmen can't move and fire. I said earlier that you could move and fire, but that's, that only applies to the longbowmen in this case. Crossbows aren't allowed to move and fire. Um, but I think what I'll do is shift them one to the left there, so that they will be able to uh, have a shot at the, those longbowmen in a later turn. Right, and then we've got the cavalry on the French right to move. So starting with the five facing, so these are undrilled discipline three cavalry, which means they can make a manoeuvre because five is two above three, so they can move 24 centimetres, so I'm going to move them. Looks to me like they will end up um, level with this line. I'm just going to do that, so they can change their facing because it's a manoeuvre. I'll just leave them there like that. Turn that to a one, and then this is the biggie now. These guys here are within because they've got the bonus. These guys here, rather, because they've got the bonus of the six, they will be able to reach these uh, English longbowmen. Um, had they been within normal movement distance, they would have been allowed to use the six as a bonus in the forthcoming melee, but because they're using it to make the extra move distance, they can't use it in melee as well. So I'm just going to move them forward, first of all. We know they're really in range, so they'll go up. So they go straight forward to begin with. You're not allowed to make a manoeuvre to charge. Um, and then having contacted the enemy here, they then shift. I think I'll show you this a bit closer, show you what I mean. Okay, so they advance forward, straight forward. They're not allowed to shift um, while they advance, but having contacted the longbowmen, they then have to move across, not so they can form completely. It's not like Field of Glory. They don't conform completely, but they have to move across sufficiently so that the centre of the unit, which is there, um, is against the uh, opponents, so there's always a little bit of an offset, um, but that comes that becomes important um, when you get uh, overlaps and so on. But the way the way they've managed to do it is that these adjacent Gascons won't be able to contribute to the melee because there's a gap there, so it's only a straightforward fight between the French cavalry and the English longbowmen and I suspect this is going to be um, a slaughter for the uh, for the longbowmen. Now it's time to now it's time to show you um, how combat works so for this one look we're going to switch now to the combat dice the larger dice so that we don't get them confused with these smaller activation dice so here's the melee, it's fought straight away, um, it, as it happens this is the last move of the phase but um, um, had it come earlier in the phase we would have fought this melee straight away, um, you don't, there isn't a specific melee phase to the turn. Um, so the first thing you do is look at the, the respective strengths of each unit, so the English longbowmen have a strength of three, so they get three combat dice and as it happens so do the French they have a strength of three um, but the um, French have an activation dice beside them and the English don't which means that they get in what's known as impetus which is quite an important concept in these rules so they get an additional combat dice for that um, they also are fresh cavalry, and by fresh I mean they haven't taken any losses so far. There isn't a casualty marker beside them. So they get an additional impetus dice for that. Um, had the English um, managed to deploy their stakes, then they wouldn't have been allowed to use impetus um, over across the stakes, which meant those two dice wouldn't have been there. Um, and I think that is all they get. And as I say, had they been within normal distance of the uh, 
longbowmen, they could have used that six to give them another bonus dice as well, but that wasn't the case. So we're going to be rolling five French dice against three English dice. Right, so here comes the dice roll. And um, <clears throat> we now look at the result. Um, so the French have rolled a six and four fours. And the English are rolled two fives and a one. Right, now you're only going to look, this is very similar to any, anyone who's, roll, who's played um, uh, Force on Force. It's an opposed dice roll. And what we're interested in is the, fir the top four ranking dice values. So we're going to ignore that four to begin with. Um, if there is a gap, which there is in this case, then you assume that that has a dice facing of two, but you don't reorder them in descending order. That's a one, but that doesn't get moved to there and the blank two to there. You keep that as a blank two, and it can only be used in a defensive manner, by which I mean, had that opposing dice been a one there, it wouldn't have, had, it wouldn't have been con considered to be of greater value than that one. It's only an imaginary two for defensive purposes, if that makes sense. So we now look at the result. And six beats five, five beats four, four beats one, and four beats imaginary two. Um, in a normal combat, um, if you roll more than double, then... Um, Excuse me a moment, I'm just going to turn that noise off. Yeah, sorry about that, I've got an extremely noisy fridge. Um, yeah, in a normal combat, if you roll more than double, that's an automatic kill. And anything great, greater than, but not double, is a discipline test. Um, and if you fail the discipline test, you get another kill. But these French cavalry have the impact ability, and the two virtues of that are that one that it allows you to charge an enemy unit on your discipline level and not one greater and the other is that any win is an automatic kill so the French have got a kill there and they've got the kill there and there so they've killed three they've made they've caused three casualties on the English whereas the um, English have managed to get hit on the French but only by a difference of one, which means that the French have to take a discipline test to see if they have a casualty. And they, at the moment, are discipline three, but they have a commander attached, which means they're discipline two. So all I need to get is two or higher on this dice in order to save them. And it's six, so they're saved. So the upshot of that is that the English have suffered three casualties, which is their strength number, um, so they rout immediately, as predicted. Right, so the English longbowmen are going to rout, um, which means that you take their pieces off the table. Um, now, they haven't actually used an activation dice at this point. Um, so to represent their loss, I have to remove one of the English activation die from the bag. So I'm going to do that now. So you just find one of the yellow ones, take it out. That goes to one side and you place it alongside the unit that you've just taken off um, with the, the value of their their army value face up so you can keep track and the, as it happens the a longbow unit has an army value of 3 so I'm going to put the dice beside them with a value of 3 face up so I can keep track of how much the English army has lost um, the next thing to take into account is that there was a captain attached to that unit so there's a possibility that he will be killed and um, you roll a dice to decide because the French 
are obliged to pursue um, because they're mounted cav mounted uh, knights. Um, he will be killed during the pursuit if he rolls a five or a six. So we're going to roll that and see what happens to him. And it's a six, so he's dead as well. It's not good news for the English. Um, had he survived, he would have been he would have been allowed to move to the nearest uh, unattached unit. Right then, the French cavalry pursue their normal move distance forward, so they hit the English knights um, behind, and um, another melee is, imme is fought immediately. Only this time, there are no impetus. There's no impetus allowed for either side. So even had there been an, un, an un, unactivated action dice on those English knights, they wouldn't have been out, allowed to use it. So we'll, we'll work out what happens in that melee next. Okay, so both units have a strength of three, um, and because impetus isn't allowed, there are no bonus dice for impetus either, so even though both sides are fresh cavalry, they don't get any extra dice for that. So it's straightforward, three against three. And um, the other thing that I forgot to take into account with that last melee is that the both of these sides have armour which allows you to uh, adjust the dice rolling so that where I rolled the discipline test to see if the French Knights uh, took a loss and they didn't I wouldn't have had to have worried about that anyway because it was only a difference of one and the armour would have uh, negated that right so here we go it's a three against three dice roll on the combat dice and both sides have rolled identical rolls. That's quite unusual. Three, two, one, and three, two, one. Um, so no result from that whatsoever. Um, the one thing you do have to do now is that the English knights have now fought a melee. So you have to take an activation dice out of the bag and place it against the English knights and that means for the rest of this on a one, one up and that means now that they can't be activated uh, for the rest of this turn so all in all that's just one phase of the second turn but it's pretty disastrous for the English and one other, th one other thing that I forgot to do um, I'm sorry if I make too many mistakes and put you off these walls is that as a result of that route um, any unit that is within the route path of the longbowman or one DU to either side of the route path has to take a discipline test, which means that these Gascons and the English Knights needed to take a discipline test, and if they fail it, they take a casualty. So the English Knights have got a discipline of uh, four, and the Gascoins have got discipline of four as well. So we'll do the Gascoins first of all. They've got to get four or better. It's a two, so they're going to have a casualty. And the Knights is a two, so they're going to have a casualty as well. So we've got to place casualty markers on both of those. There we go. There's a dead English Knight beside the Knights. Um, that wouldn't have had an effect on that melee, so it doesn't matter that I forgot it at that stage. Um, because those knights didn't have impetus in the melee anyway, um, the fact that they weren't fresh didn't have any result on the outcome. And a dead uh, marker against the Gascons as well. So once you get, um, you can rally these off, um, but once you get to the value of the strength of the unit, uh, the unit will route as well, so you have to you have to try and uh, remove those casualty markers as soon as possible. Something else that I forgot to mention: um, if a commander is killed, then you're supposed to take a discipline test on any units that are then out of command range. Um, but although that English captain was killed during that uh, initial melee. Um, there's actually uh, a senior commander here, the general, um, Edward the Black Prince, who has a greater command radius. So even though that captain was killed, 
nothing fell out of command range as a result, um, so there was no need to take a discipline test um, for that incident. Had, otherwise, it's quite possible that um, there might have been two, another couple of casualties on these units as a result of a, a second failed discipline test, but that wasn't the case in this um, instance. I only mentioned it uh, as it's another aspect of the rules that I forgot to to raise. Right, so next action phase and um, after that predominant uh, French phase there should be a lot of English dice left in the bag and um, the English should be the active player for the rest of this turn but um, they suffered a bit in that first phase so another seven dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So um, four, three. You are allowed to look in the bag as well, see what's um, left over. So there are three dice left in it, two English and one French. Uh, right, so the English have four dice this turn, this phase. Roll those and see what happens. Oh, they're doing appallingly. They've got another one, which is no use at all. And two threes and a two. So, um, again, I'm going to pause the camera and have a think about that and then show you what I've decided to do with them. Well, the two is no use either, so I've got two threes, um, which I can't do a great deal with. So what I've decided to do is give them both to this longbow unit here which is Discipline 4, reduced down to Discipline 3 because of the attached captain. Um, and I'm going to give them both the dice to give them a bonus um, in shooting against those crossbowmen. And as I say, there's not a lot I can do with the, the poor dice rod anyway, but hopefully if I can get these crossbowmen out of the way, um, I should be able to bring a lot more the right flank of the uh, English line around um, to kind of face these French in the corner here. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So the next thing is to roll the French dice and see what they turn up. And the French are carrying on with their good luck. They've got another six which gives them a bonus somewhere of five and a three. So um, Again, I'm going to have a think about that and then show you what I've decided. OK, so I gave the six to these knights here that are facing the Gascons and that six will give them the extra bonus DU which will allow them to cross that gap and charge the Gascons. And the five I gave to this unit down here which will allow them to manoeuvre into that gap there and the three to that unit there which will allow them to make a simple advance um, towards that English line there. So um, the English are the active side which means that their threes will be played first so you'll get to see how the longbow shoot now um, and that will then be followed by the three on the reactive side, which will be those. So I'll show you how shooting works next. OK, so um, it's a very similar mechanism to the melee. Um, you look at the respective strengths of each side to begin with. So both the longbows and the crossbowmen have a strength of three, um, but the Longbowmen have a bonus dice there, because they've got a double, so they will be able to roll four dice against the crossbows three. And in this case, there's not um, counter shooting, it's the longbows shooting at the crossbowmen. So whatever the crossbowmen roll won't have any impact on the longbows, it's purely as a defence against the longbows shooting. Um, so we'll roll those and see what we get there. Right, the English are very poor at their dice rolling. They've got a string of four twos, and the crossbow's not much better. Um, in fact, uh, 
significantly worse because they've got a one there which will have a, an influence I'll show you in a moment. Right, so longbows um, have the effect of reducing the enemy's armour by one, um, but only if they are heavily armoured or armoured. Um, and the crossbow are just what is known as average. So there is another category below that which is uh, described as lacking protection but long, long bows don't reduce average armour down to lacking protection. Um, so there's no, they're gonna, the longbows in this case are going to have no effect on the uh, uh, adjusting these dice rolls so we can look at them in a straightforward way. So that's a draw, two against two, two against two there as well, that's a draw, so the crossbow can survive that. Um, this is two against one, so that's double, so that is a immediate casualty on the crossbowman and this is two against an imaginary two so again that's a draw so the longbows have managed to um, cause one casualty on the crossbowman so these dice get turned to facing of one we place a casualty against the crossbowman and the next thing to do is to move these knights here which have got a dice of three so they just make a simple advance of 24 centimeters which will take them to there and that gets turned to a one um, after that will be this group of knights down here which is on a five so they're discipline three with a five on them which allows them because they're undrilled they need two higher than the discipline level but they they can make a maneuver so they're simply going to go about there face more like that and that goes to a one And then we're on to this, uh, the exciting bit, which is the charge against the Gascons. So they have a six, which allows them to make that extra DU of movement. So they move forward first of all. They're not allowed to shift when they're making a charge, but they do make contact. But then they have to shift across so that their centre is against the Gascons, but not completely matched up. And then uh, we work out the factors for that melee. So once again the English side has been caught without a dice allocated to these guys. Which means they won't have impetus in this melee. Um, so they simply have their strength which is in this case is four. So they have four dice. Um, and the French have a strength of three. They have impetus because they've got a... Um, activation dice beside them and they also are fresh cavalry with impetus so they get another one so it's five against four uh, I don't know what's happened to these yellow dice so the French have rolled three fours, three and a one and the Gascons, of English, have rolled a three, a two, and two ones. So we can ignore this fourth one, uh, fifth one. We only take the first four. And because their impact doesn't matter whether they're doubled or not, each win is going to be an automatic hit. And remember, the Gascons have a strength of four, but they've they've already got this one casualty. Um, so that's a kill, that's a kill, that's a kill, and that's a kill. So they have lost another four, so they are routed as well. Right, so the Gascon unit is removed from the table, and because there isn't a dice beside them, again, you take a dice out of the dice bag, um, which you put against them with their corresponding army value, um, which in their case is four. So the English have now lost an army value total of 7 and they have to take a morale check when they get to 12 so they're not there yet. Um, 
the cavalry are obliged to pursue and they're also allowed or obliged to make a shift if they come across any friendly figures so they will be allowed to shift past these guys um, making a move their full move which is 24 centimeters which takes them quite close to the table edge here I'm not sure in the walls whether they can pursue off the table I don't think so but I'll check that in a moment. Not that they had to but um, just from my own interest. Well I haven't been able to find in the walls, I've only had a quick look um, about whether a unit can pursue off the table. Um, so I'm go I'll have to ask that question on the Polkovnik forum but um, for the purposes of this game if it does arise I'll say that uh, they can't go off the table. They are in an awkward situation anyway because they need to manoeuvre now in order to turn around. Um, so I think that's a fair compromise to say that they need to roll a, a, a dice high enough to allow them to manoeuvre. So having taken a dice out of the bag because of that Gascon unit being removed, there are now only two dice left in the bag, which once again is bad news for the English because it means that... Um, the French player, uh, which was the reactive player during the last phase, is now the active player. So the French get to roll their dice first of all, and they have a four. Um, so I can see what I want to do with that. I'm going to give that to the a unit of cavalry over here. I'll show you in a moment. And then the English roll their dice, and they have a two. <laughs> and um, they really are in trouble, because there is nothing that that two can be used for. Um, so that gets put to one side. Right, so I put the four on that unit of French knights there. Um, they're disciplined three, reduced down to two because they've got the attached commander. So two higher because they're undrilled allows them to manoeuvre. So I'm just, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just going to um, move them across into that gap there, and then that will be the end of that final action phase of turn two. So it's now the end phase of turn two, having completed all the action phases, and this is where you have the opportunity to move your commanders and um, to attempt to rally off casualties. Um, you can. I don't know if I mentioned this, but you can use an action dice to rally as well. So you, it can be an activation, um, but you also get the opportunity at the end of the, the, the each turn. Um, so on the English, in the English side, they've only got two commanders left. This one here, I am going to move around now and place him um, attached to this unit here. Because something I haven't done in this game yet, um, which I think the English are now going to find quite useful, is to perform a group move. Um, so if I have a commander attached to that group of men-at-arms there, it will possibly allow me to move both units on either side. So I'm going to move this guy here across to there. And um, if you were to rally as part of the action phases. You wouldn't be allowed to do so if you are in melee. But in the end phase, with a commander attached, even if you're in melee, you can attempt to rally. So the Black Prince is going to attempt to rally off this casualty marker. Um, so the way you do that is you take a discipline test. So they have a discipline of three, reduced down to two, um, because the commander's attached, but then you add the casualty marker back in. Um, so however many casualty markers you have, so there's one, so that goes back up to three. So they have to roll a dice and achieve three or better in order to get rid of that casualty. And they've rolled a three, so that can be taken off. And um, on the French side, I'm not going to move too much around. Um, I want to keep that commander um, attached there to help them in the melee um, and I'm going to leave the king attached to that unit there 
But over here, there's a similar situation, only they're not in melee, where there's a casualty there that can be rallied off. So the crossbowmen have a discipline of five, reduced down to four because there's a commander attached, back up to five because of that. So they need five or better to get rid of that marker. And they roll a two, so that's going to remain on them. And that, apart from taking all the action dice off and putting them back in the bag, is the end of turn two. Right, start of turn three. Um, it th I am beginning to make, uh, not, mis not, not make mistakes, but uh, to make omissions, um, which is one of the disadvantages of being a solo player. Um, when you've got an opponent, they're usually quite uh, fast to point out any advantages that you might be denying them. Um, and a couple of things I think I've forgotten to do. When the Gascons were routed, I think I forgot to roll discipline tests on the neighbouring units. <clears throat> but in uh, in reverse, when the longbowmen shot at the cross, French crossbowmen, I think they won all of their um, all of the uh, dice uh, rolls um, against their opponent. And when that happens, if there's a commander attached, you're supposed to dice to see if he was shot. Um, and I didn't do that either. So. I've made one mistake, um, uh, which was advantage, advantageous to each side, so it balances itself out. Um, so um, just to point out that uh, I have been making a few omissions, but um, that's the way it goes. Right, so we draw first action phase of turn three, and we draw another seven dice out of the bag. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. It's looking good for the French. Seven. Oh, cracky. The French actually do now have more dice in the bags because they've still got their original nine, whereas the English are down to eight. But um, that kind of uh, uh, ratio means that the French are probably not going to be the active player again in this turn. So we roll the six French dice. See what we get. Ah, oh, right, they've got two sixes. Um, I don't know whether I mentioned this before, but the having a camp or a baggage train, which we haven't got, um, allows you to have multiple bonuses. So in this game, without a camp, there is no point in putting two sixes on one unit, because they'll only get one bonus for one of the sixes. But um, you could, for instance, put three fives against something with a camp, you know, when you have a camp, but we haven't in this case. So I've got... Um, Two sixes, a five, a three, and two twos. So I'm going to turn the camera off again, have a think about that, and then show you where I've allocated the dice. Right, so this um, French unit here, which is a result of that pursuit, is virtually off the table edge. I've given the six two, and that will allow them to manoeuvre and um, to turn round and uh, threaten those longbowmen from the rear. They won't be able to contact them because you can't contact with a manoeuvre. Um, but it will certainly put them in a precarious situation. Um, the other six I've given to this unit here um, so that they're, they've got a bonus whilst fighting that, uh, that melee. And then um, I've put the straightforward three on that unit there, which is discipline three, so they'll be able to allow to make a straightforward advance. That unit there is discipline three down to two because of the commander. Um, so I've given them both of the twos so they, they can only make a straightforward advance but they will get a bonus for the additional dice. And over there I've given the crossbowmen the five so that they can shoot and return the favour at those longbowmen there. Um, so I've just got the solitary English dice to roll now to see what they can do in response. <sighs> um, I honestly don't know what that's happening with these yellow dice. It's a one, so they haven't got any um, use for that at all, which means that they're going to be without any sort of impetus for this action phase. So it's just over the French to, to make all their moves. Um, 
So this could be a decisive phase in this game, I think. Okay, so first up we've got the two twos there, um, which will mean that the unit can move 30 centimetres forward and can shift a little bit if they want to, which I think they probably do. So we're going to move to there. And then shift one du to the left. Allow them to do that, keeping the commander attached, and those two dice are turned to ones. And then here, this one will be next. This is a three. This again is a straightforward advance. Um, uh, which will only be 24 centimetres this time. So they can get to about there. I think that's off of the screen, what you can see. But I'm just moving them forward and then also shifting them a little bit to the, to the left. And turning their dice to a one as well. And then after that, it'll be the crossbowmen on the five to shoot their bolts at the English. OK, so it's these crossbowmen shooting at these longbowmen. Both sides have a strength of three. Um, you're not allowed to give bonuses to crossbow units, so there wouldn't have been any point in putting a six or a double on that. So it's just a straightforward three against three. Um, and had the longbowmen had armour, the crossbows would have ignored it, but they don't. Um, so it's just a straightforward contest of three against three. <coughs> right, good rolls on both sides this time. So the French have rolled two sixes and a five, and the English have replied with two sixes and a two. Um, so that's a draw, that's a draw. Um, and that is more than double, five is more than double two, so the English take an automatic casualty. Well, that's the casualty marker on the longbowman. It's uh, quite a nice figure of a, an English longbowman crawling away wounded. Um, right, so that was the five, so now there are two sixes to do. So I'll start, you can choose which order you do them in. So I'm going to start with this unit here of six and move them turn them round. Um, if you move backwards it reduces your movement by one DU so they're allowed to move three DU now um, which is still 18 centimetres so they can turn around and threaten the English in the rear so that gets turned to a one and finally for this action phase it's fighting this melee over here which I think is going to go the French way. So this is not going to be good for the English. Um, they don't have an activation dice um, like that. So the French have an activation dice, but the English don't, which means they don't have impetus. So they get three dice for their strength, but nothing else. Whereas the French get three dice for their strength, one for having impetus, um, one for being fresh cavalry with impetus and the bonus dice because it's a six facing so they're going to be rolling six dice against the English three. All right, here we go. Um, I should have said that they, they do have the impact abilities but impact doesn't apply this turn because they didn't move. This is a static melee now. Right, so the French, oh, really doing well. Six, six, five, and four, and then the three and the two won't matter. And the English, you got four, two, and one, so they're in trouble. Um, right, so that is a discipline test, that is an automatic kill, that is an automatic kill, and that is an automatic kill. Um, so they have a strength of three, so even without. Um, the discipline role, we know that they are routed and um, there's nothing around them to take a discipline test but the general is with them um, so there's a chance he'll be killed um, 
So because the, the French cavalry have the pursuit ability, he will be killed on a five or a six. So let's see what happens to the Black Prince. He survives, which means he's allowed to move and the rest of the unit come off. Okay, so the Black Prince is obliged to join the nearest unit, which was these threatened longbowmen. So um, he's out of the pan and into the fire. Um, because in the next turn these are going to cause them big problems. Um, the pursuing unit, as per my um, decision a minute ago, went up to the table edge but didn't leave it. I'll have to check that on the forum about whether they pursue off the table. The action dice gets turned to a 1 and um, I took a dice out of the bag for, to correspond with the loss of the English knights. They had an army value of 4 which means the English have now lost 11 army value and when it gets to 12 they have to take a discipline test for the whole army so they're not there yet. So we're now on to the next action phase of turn 3. Um, it's quite extraordinary this. I played a game yesterday just to try out the rules again in my head and the English won easily. Um, and now the French are winning. I think it's down to the fact that they've got all their cavalry over in this nice open space here and caught the caught the English off before they could uh, get their stakes into the ground and strengthen that flank. And most of the English army I haven't been able to activate because I've been rolling such poor dice, so they're all over here doing very little. Um, but things might change, you never know. So we take seven dice out of the bag again, and this time the odds are in favour of the English being the active player. Um, so I've got four more dice in the bag now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So five to the English, two to the French. So the English roll their dice first of all. Let's hope they um, get something good. Yeah, not bad. Oh, apart from there's the fact there's a one there. Right, two fives, a four, a two, and a one. Um, so once again, I need a bit of uh, thinking time, so I'll turn the camera off and show you what I'll come up with in a moment. The English are struggling now. Um, the one saving grace is that this unit here has already activated this turn, so it's not a threat for the rest of this turn. Um, so what I've decided to do, I gave both the fives to that unit of billmen and they so that would allow them to maneuver backwards um, their their heavy foot so they're only they're only allowed to move two so going backwards allows them to move only one do you so giving them the extra dice will take them back up to two do you so they will be able to maneuver backwards and threaten the flank of these um, French knights and then hopefully, hopefully, hopefully next turn they will get to move before these guys do and charge them in the flank otherwise those longbowmen are probably finished. Um, there's no point in giving the dice to those longbowmen at the moment because they're not threatened um, they can't take up their stakes and immediately put them behind them do anything like that and if they're charged in the rear they won't get impetus anyway, um, so a dice on them would be wasted at the moment, and they're not in longbow range of the guys there, so uh, they can't shoot at anything. Um, the one was no good to me, so I had to put that to one side. Um, I've given the two to this unit here of heavy, not heavy foot, they are heavy foot, but uh, men at arms or knights, dismounted knights. Um, they, that, all that will allow them to do is to advance and because they're wearing heavy armour um, they can only move one DU forward um, the rough ground doesn't affect their movement because it's only rough and not difficult but um, one DU is better than nothing I suppose and I decided to give the four to these longbowmen so that they can have another shot at those crossbowmen see if they can clear them out of the way so now we have to see what the French will do with their dice roll of their two die. Um, that's not bad. Five and a four. Um, 
again I just need a little bit of a think and then I'll turn the camera back on. Right, well all I've decided to do with the French dice is to give it to a couple more cavalry units to keep the pressure on over this side. Um, so I've given these the four, so they'll be able to just to make a straightforward advance and get over to about here and begin to threaten those billmen who would have, um, they're not, they're not, not that they will know this, but um, the billmen will then have trouble from uh, the side as well if they're going to turn around. And in the distance there, um, that unit there have got the five, so they'll be able to manoeuvre to around here somewhere. So um, first up is to uh, start off with the lower English numbers, which is this unit here, which is on a two, so they're going to move forward. Um, one DU, which is six centimetres. Um, I might have to... Uh, it's not a terribly good uh, terrain piece from the point of view of uh, positioning the figures, so I'll have to do something like that and remember that they're about where that uh, change in colour of the terrain piece is. And then we can move on to the four, which is those bowmen there. So they're going to take a shot at the uh, crossbowmen. So it's a straightforward roll of three against three again. Right, five, three and two to the English. Four, four and two to the French. Um, and as I say, the French aren't shooting back, so it's only the, we have to see what damage the English have done. So they've got a discipline test there, that's failed, and that's draw, so that's failed. So one discipline test um, that the French have got to throw. So they're discipline five, but they've got a commander attached, so they're discipline four. So four or better saves them. Five, so they don't take a hit. Right, now this is quite an interesting situation, because the next dice to play will be the French four which is this one here, and if you remember, what I said I was planning to do was to advance them um, in order to be able to keep the pressure on here. But if I bring them within charge range of the billmen, um, because these are going to be activated next, um, they've got a double five there. Um, so instead of following their original plan of going backwards and threatening these French in the flank, um, it would allow them to charge those French um, with a bonus dice because they've got two fives. So um, the French player wouldn't risk that. Um, so I am going to move the French forward, um, but only um, as far so that they're out of range of the billmen. And the billmen are heavy foot, so they have a range of two, but they've got a bonus there, so they have theoretically got a range of three. Um, and you're allowed to measure. So I'm going to move them to there. Um, the other option would be to defer with the dice. Um, I don't know whether I've done any deferring in this game so far. Um, i show you how it works, but uh, I think I want to get them a little bit closer. So we move them to there. And then next up will be this group of five, so I then have to decide what I'm going to do with the billmen and as I say, I'm going to move those backwards so they can move back to DU, which is 12 and they can manoeuvre because they've got five, so they're going to move turn like that and then that is a kind of response to that French threat from the rear but it does leave them vulnerable to a charge there. Um, so it's all getting quite interesting. And then the only thing left to do for this action phase is remove that group in the distance there into this space here. Um, so they can move 24 centimetres. So they're going to move to about here. I might as well put them actually adjacent with them and then there's possibilities of group moves in the future.
So that's the end of that action phase, so it's back to the dice bag to get some more dice out of the bag. Right, well the same thing has happened as last turn, there are now only two dice left in the bag, and there's an equal number of French and English, and as the English were the active player last turn, last phase, it means the French are now the active player, so they get to roll their dice first of all. And they rolled a two, and I think there's nothing they can do with that, no, there's nothing on the table that will activate with a two now, so that is discarded. And the English get to roll their one, and they rolled a six. Right, so uh, again, I'm, that's quite a valuable dice, so I'm going to turn the camera off and think how to spend that wisely. Well, I'm, I'm a little bit limited in what I can do with it at this late stage in the turn, but so what I'm going to do is give it to these longbowmen here, because um, they have a viable target in front of them now. When these guys move forward here, they actually shimmied over a little bit to the to their right and to be a viable target um, you have to be to, a, to an extent within directly in front of the fire which they are only by half a centimetre or so but there's, def there's a definite overlap there um, and so the six will give them a bonus dice in firing um, so this will be the first time in the game where the longbowmen have actually managed to get a shot off at the French knights. Um, they'll have four dice because they've got a strength of three plus one for the bonus and their longbows reduce the armour of the knights down to average protection so they won't have any defensive armour against this volley. Um, so I think that's the best way of spending that dice in these circumstances. So, um, that is the only thing to do in this action phase, so let's see how that plays out. So the English longbows have four dice, and the French have three dice to oppose the roll. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for the English. Um, three sixes, and a four, but the French still managed in encountering it. Uh, two sixes, and a one. So that means uh, that's a draw, and that's a draw, uh, that's an automatic kill, and that is opposed by a phantom two, but it's still double, so that is two automatic kills. And that is go a good thing to do, because um, it immediately makes the cavalry unit unfresh, which takes away a lot of their advantages in combat. Um, so we'll put two casualty markers against that French unit. So I've got quite a nice little uh, vignette there from uh, Wargain's Foundry of a French knight being um, uh, overcome by English archers. Um, one's about to club him in the head and the other's saying, no, hang on a minute, we can get a good ransom for this guy. So that's one casualty marker and the other one is a fallen horse. Um, and that is now the end of the action phases of turn three. Um, so it's the chance now to, in the end phase, to move the commanders and to rally. Um, so the English um, have only got one casualty marker at the moment, which is this one here. So I'm going to move uh, this captain here across to that unit there. And to rally them, the discipline four down to three because the commander's attached to them. Um, add one for the casualty is four, so they need to get four or better to remove that. Uh, and they do, they get a four. So that can come off. Um, over on the French side, um, I'm just thinking over here whether I want to risk leaving the Black Prince with those archers, I don't think I do, because if they uh, if they do get clobbered, he's likely to die in the in the as a consequence. So uh, I'm going to move him and attach him to the Billmen instead, who are a little bit stronger. Um, and over on the French side, uh, I'll try and rally that one off, that casualty marker off. So the discipline five down to four, cost of the commander. Add one for the casualty is five, so they need to get five or better in order to get rid of that marker. And they don't, they get a two. 
And then over here, I definitely want to do something about those two. So I'm going to move um, the king across to them. Um, so they were discipline three, down to two for the king. Add two is four, because there's two casualty markers, so then you get four, better to take one off. And what was that? That was a four. So they can take one off. So I'll get rid of the, the dead horse. And that is the end of the end phase, other than taking off the activation dice and putting them back in the bag.